People's Day is the celebration of dedicating Martin Luther King Jr. Way. Martin Luther King Jr. Way we will proceed to shortly when we get to the March section of our program. But the idea came from Stan Macklin. Stan has regrettably passed, but he made an unforgettable contribution to the community. The chair of our coalition is his daughter, Chartre Mew. We gather today to connect the leaders of, of our community who have rallied thousands of people in the spirit of building beloved community. Stan's motto for the renaming was Harrisonburg has so much diversity, but it, did, it was not in public places or in our positions of power. So he suggested that we name a street after King. And you see that street raised up uh, there at the edge of campus. And his goal was to build beloved community in Harrisonburg. So we have now a good sized group and we have enough folks that I hope we may be able to join together in, in prayer. And with that, Rabbi, if you would be willing to lead us in prayer. One of the lines for which Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. is well known, but not his most quoted phrase, was I have a dream that one day little black boys and girls will be holding hands with little white boys and girls. But what I have to ask is why did this have to be part of his dream? Why couldn't they before his dream? When did it become not allowed when children of different color couldn't hold each other's hands? Did it start in America or in Europe or in Africa? Did it start in Asia? I don't know when it started. Now, I don't know if you've heard of the book, the Torah. You might know that it's a Jewish book. We call it the constitution of the Jewish people, but it's not only ours. The Torah consists of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Most of us know it as the Bible. Maybe not all of us. Maybe, but many of us here consider that book to be holy. I looked in the Bible to see what it said about black children and white children or people of different color, and I couldn't find it. I don't know if any of you could. Now, you might look to the Bible to say that there are different levels of people in God's eyes. Some people were the children of Adam and Eve. The Bible, the Torah, says that Adam and Eve were created in God's image. So the way I see it, if Adam and Eve were created in God's image, the only, only the children of Adam and Eve were created in God's image. Anyone else is not on the same level. But according to the Bible, which human beings are the children of Adam and Eve? Jewish children, Christian children, Muslim, Buddhist, indigenous? Well, I think you get my point. The Bible does say that human beings were divided up into different languages and communities. That happened at the Tower of Babel. And who divided them up? Well, it was God, creator of us all. Now, there is one more story in the Bible that talks about the color of people's skin. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Numbers chapter 12. Miriam and Aaron were gossiping about Moses. Actually, it says that Miriam was complaining because Moses married a Cushite woman. Many people don't realize this, but Cush was an ancient biblical name for the Ethiopia. So in other words, Miriam was saying, can you believe our brother married a black woman? And what happened? God did not like that. God punished Miriam by giving her a scaly skin infection. In other words, like God was saying, Miriam, you don't like black people? Fine, I will make you as white as possible. And that was her punishment. See, God saw all human beings as being God's children. And nowhere else in the Torah is there any comment on the color of people's skin. It didn't matter. And for those people who it did matter, God told them otherwise, because they were all children of the one God. That is, God did not see color, and as far as we know, the ancient Israelite people didn't seem to comment on it either. 
Human beings are human beings. The only time the color of someone's skin was mentioned was basically God saying that if you have a problem with someone's skin color, shut up. Reverend King had a dream, but it was not a new dream. He was dreaming that the words of the Bible would be restored as envisioned. People can see others' color, cultures, and heritage. When it comes to seeing those differences, we have to remember the only truly important thing is that every one of us was created in the image of God and that, as in the purest of sights of our own children, little black boys and girls will be holding hands with little white boys and girls because in truth, until we teach them otherwise, children don't see each other's color. They only see other children. And to all that, let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, this greeting was from Jeffrey Kurtz Lender of Harrisonburg's Bethel Congregation. We are so grateful. The next section of our program will be going through the uh, list of organizers who have held, as I said, already a People's Day that was attended by thousands. Uh, that at this part of the program, we hope that your, the organizations will say something about themselves and we'll give information on how we can connect with each other. And then during our march and our subsequent gathering, we will do the networking to continue to build for the next year. The first event having uh, in our build up toward People's Day right after our previous celebration was a rally and an effort to get the school curriculum in Virginia right to put labor history back in, or make sure that it stays in our K through 12 curriculum. And that effort was led by the Virginia Education Association, which helped draft school standards that, that uh, and defend school standards that protected the history of labor in Virginia. And we were successful in getting that done, a cartload, a little, literal wagon load of thousands of petitions uh, demanding that was presented in front of the General Assembly. And you can know that the people you are organizing with were a part of that. So I would like to acknowledge that in the absence of, I believe, Emily, who may have spoken on behalf of that, is at the General Assembly right now, uh, working on the rights of working people and working on the education of our children. The next organization, the next big event that we had was a rally to have full funding in the state budget for education. And that was held by a number of groups together, the VA again, but also Freedom Virginia. So hello to Freedom, Freedom Virginia, if any of you are there online or for the record. And at that point, a number of us I don't know if any of us here started to sign up for People's Day. Okay, the next group, help me out, was that Refugee Day? Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> so next was Refugee Day. That was our first major in-person event with the broad Harrisonburg community. As you all may well know, Harrisonburg has long been a refugee resettlement community. And our refugee community is a crucial part of our of our culture and of uh, and of our welcoming character. And it really was the turning point that ensured People's Day was going to be a success this year at uh, Refugee Festival, uh, which will be happening again this year. So do make sure to attend. We also connected with Hispanic Festival. Crimson Solano of Coast Food was present at Refugee Day, and we connected there, and we planned that this was the way to do People's Day, to be with the people rather than expect the people to come somewhere. So from there, we rolled forward to Hispanic Festival. And unfortunately, the weather and circumstances are hitting us such that these folks have been planning and organizing this all along. And uh, uh, come and join us, folks. This is the 10th anniversary of People's Day. 
if folks want to go and reach out to those folks, this is how we do organizing. <laughs> if you see people coming by, stop them, bring them over. This is how we do it. And, and there will be coffee as soon as they get cold over at Emmanuel Episcopal Church. So let me say on, on behalf of uh, Hispanic Festival, more than 3,000 people, more than 3,000 people celebrating culture, food, fellowship, community. And there we had a, our first table, the Harrisburg Martin Luther King Jr. Way Coalition. And know that when there are community events in the coming year, we will not be there at the last minute, which is what Crimson did for us in, uh, in cooperation with Camilo and with all the other organizers at COSPU, the Salvadoran community organizers. Um, they got us in at the last minute. We, we're, we're planned way ahead right now. A major achievement that, that COSPU and the organizers of Hispanic Festival uh, had here in the community was participation in our American Rescue Plan Act uh, input process. So this connects us now to Dr. directly. Dr. King envisioned that the way we would solve our social problems, which at the time, at his time, was the brutal conditions in the neighborhoods of his African-American community was through billions, billions, he said in his time, of federal dollars voted into existence, we now understand through something known as modern money theory, organized in a job guarantee that would rebuild the communities by the people in the communities, for the people in the communities, led by the people in the communities. That's community-led community development. That's Dr. King. And when the soccer leagues here in this city organized to say, after this pandemic, we want to build back better with federal dollars, voted into existence for that purpose, the city had to listen. We added an additional listening session. We changed the facilitation agenda in that session and they said we want soccer fields for our young folks who are no longer children adult soccer fields so we can organize and build community with dignity that was a major major win for our community and we still have more work to do to finish that's hispanic festival african-american festival we have a meeting from Ms. Carol Raymond. Now, um, would somebody be comfortable voicing Ms. Carol Raymond's greeting for us? Would you potentially care to read this out for us? Um, just the whole thing? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, on behalf of the Harrisonburg Rockingham African American Festival uh, community, uh, Committee, we thank you for the opportunity to be a small part of today's people celebration as we celebrate the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As we continue to march on, let us always be reminded that we must continue to work to break the chains of discrimination. If they say we can't, then we need to know why not. We are all God's people. The color of your skin or mine should never be, to, uh, be a determining factor of where we can live, worship, go to school, or work. We carry on to make known we are proud people with the same rights and responsibilities as others, though not always so easy. By working together, we showcase our heritage, we keep the dream and hope alive, and we, and as we move forward by demonstrating the power of strength in numbers, we build up our people and our communities. The Harrisonburg Rockingham African American Festival has strived for close to 30 years to bring, in, uh, to bring together our people and community to celebrate our rich heritage and community togetherness. We provide an avenue for all people to join us to celebrate not only the African American community, but our community as a whole. Dr. King's words read, quote, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see, see it together, end quote. 
On Saturday, September 14th, 2024, we will again be hosting the 28th annual Harrisonburg Rockingham African American Festival. In the past, we have occupied the space adjacent to Sims Center. However, this year we are most excited to be hosting in Ralph Sampson Park. This brings a fresh new perspective to the festival as we continue to move onward and upward and avenue to continue to give back and embrace our rich heritage as people and a community. We are planning a wonderful day of togetherness, peace, community organizations, food and craft vendors, and invite each of you to join us as participants or supporters. Please look for us on Facebook or please reach out to us at hraaf13 at gmail.com if you have any questions or would like to hear more concerning participation or support of the 28th annual Harrisonburg Rockingham African American Festival. In conclusion, the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. quote, let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, end quote. Quote, so even though we face difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream, end quote. Quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, end quote. Let us never forget where we come from or the many sacrifices of many before us. Keep the dream alive. Best Carol Johnson Raymond, Chair Harrisonburg Rockland and African American Festival. That is African American Festival, which uh, has always been from the very beginning, was the uh, pivotal event in our street renaming. I can recall when we did, tried to do the street renaming, Stan Macklin had misgivings about whether it would be successful. And he did not know that it would be successful until he knocked on the door of Ms. Wilhelmina Johnson, the mother of Ms. Carol Raymond Johnson, and she said this was good. So we cannot neglect the leadership of African American women in all the good things that have happened here in Harrisonburg and the, the good things and the struggle for freedom in the United States going back to the time that uh, Europeans arrived on this land uh, and established an unfortunate relationship with non-Europeans. Next we have Shenandoah Valley Pride Shenandoah Valley Pride was established soon after our street renaming. I think in some ways we could count it as a part of the blooming that happened in Harrisonburg after we realized that, yes, we can change that name and there will not be violence, nothing terrible will happen. And people started coming forward and saying, indeed, wonderful things will happen. And one of the wonderful things that happened was Pride Festival, which has grown bigger and bigger and was held again in person this year. The Harrisonburg uh, Martin Luther King Hope Coalition was very proud to be present, and be represented, and to, uh, and to affirm that that was a representation of our community built on an inclusive power. The next festival was Skeleton Festival. Another major, major event that marked Harrisonburg Downtown Renaissance, putting its full support behind us. Skeleton Festival was a, celebra a celebration of the multicultural character of our celebrations here in this agricultural community, in this community that's in the middle of the most, the biggest agricultural economy within the Commonwealth of Virginia. So harvest means a lot of things across all the of, uh, of our community and Skeleton Festival was a great way to celebrate that. Uh, Andrea right now is hiking. She said she would be hiking even today in the mountains of West Virginia, Andrea Dono, who was going to have uh, greetings for us, but we've had great support from, great support from uh, and Skeleton Festival. Next, finally, we have organizers who can speak in their own voice directly. <laughs> the Friendly City Food Co-op uh, welcomed us for, please, Friendly City Food Co-op, tell us about your uh, harvest festival. Well, it's, it's October, which is uh, co-op month. Um, and also, it's uh, usually our annual meeting for our co-op. 
and we have a, had a harvest festival um, just to celebrate exactly what you were just saying, the, the harvest time here in the valley. Uh, we have had a bounty of local fruits and vegetables and uh, vendors, how many, 170 local producers across the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, so that was um, what the festival was about. We had Iron Lion play and Katie Porter. Uh, so we had some live music uh, playing. Iron Lion uh, played reggae songs. It was a, did a DJ show of reggae songs, uh, which was really appreciated and just piped across the, the parking lot. Well, we had all kinds of kids activities and uh, it was a pretty amazing uh, coming together of the community, people who shop at the co-op, people who don't shop at the co-op, who just uh, saw the event happening and came and took part in it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Steve. And will you be having that again next time? We'll be having it again next year and we're actually talking about doing something uh, in June for our birthday. Fantastic. Uh, which is the beginning of June. It'll be our 12th birthday, something like that. I did want to say that we have a, we have some other representatives here from our Equity and Justice Committee, which we've just, we're doing a refresh on it. We started it back in 2015. We had a realization that I didn't realize the history of the land on which our co-op sat for a couple of years and then it uh, became apparent to me and we immediately started to shift our thinking and the ways that we operated to be more open and welcoming to everyone in our community. If you don't know the history of our community, we do have a, a exhibit on the walls of our cafe seating area that outlines the history of our neighborhood since 1850. Uh, when a gentleman built an uh, African-American free man, built a house at the end of, I mean, at the corner of Rock, uh, Wolf Street and High Street. And up until the present day when our co-op was there, including the time in the late 50s and early 60s, when a six block area of that part of uh, Harrisonburg, uh, formerly known as Newtown, was bulldozed uh, in the name of what some people call urban renewal. And we've been uh, very focused on uh, making up for that and doing a better job. And we have living wage jobs for our people in our community. Uh, we do lots of community outreach. We now have 11 different Roundup for Change programs, uh, one each month except for December, which is kind of a busy time for us. Um, and right now we're doing a Roundup for Open Doors. It was last week. So we have another one coming up in uh, February, the first week. Yeah. But we do any, everybody on the Friendly City Equity and Justice Committee. Oh. Okay, so this is, take note, this is to get to know who the other organizers are so that you can extend the reach, we can extend the reach of our organizations. Uh, thank you for that. And, and I would also mention for, uh, come on over. Folks who are on the side, bring folks over, tell them what this is. Um, Lindsay, who is hosting us, I would, I would mention with regard to co-ops, uh, the facilitation that we have online is thanks to the Virginia Solidarity Economy Network. And we very much um, are, uh, are glad, Virginia Solidarity Economy Network, I think, would be glad to say that, uh, that they welcome... Uh, and are so glad to be a part of that spirit with the Friendly City Food Co-op. Uh, 